Hello everybody, welcome to this video which is a a sort of follow-on or an addition to my my video that I did a short while ago on how to set up your own Arc server using Arc Server Manager. And obviously I've been a little bit um, overwhelmed by the response to that video, the pe number of people who have viewed it, the number of people who have liked the video, the number of people who have commented and thanked me, and of course the number of people who have commented because they're still having issues setting up their server. Now one of the recent comments I got was someone asking me if I could talk about how you set up your cluster server and also there are a lot of people still having issues with the port forwarding and making sure that their server has the correct access so you can actually get your server published. So basically this video is going to sort of show those two aspects if you like and how they work for me. Certainly the port forwarding side of things is definitely specific to me, my PC setup with the software I'm using, the router I'm using, but hopefully it gives you an idea of what you need to be going away and looking for on your own machine to set up the correct settings to be able to get your servers published and online so that you can log into Arc, find the servers, join them, and hopefully other people can find your servers and join them. So anyway, straight into the video now. The first thing I'm going to tackle is obviously the cluster um, ID. How to generate, how to have multiple servers and have it so that you could actually transfer and move between those servers. So in my case, this is obviously my Arc Server Manager. It's a little bit more moved on from the video. I now have my my three profiles set up, my three different servers, my three maps. I'm obviously using the very latest version of Arc Server Manager now, so this will be a different version to the one that was in the previous video. So I've got my server names. Now the first thing to notice, or the most important thing to notice, the server ports and the query ports. My first server that I set up in the last video had the pretty much the default ports. Because I'm now running a second server and a third server on the same machine, when you go to another profile, those server ports have to be different. You can't use the same server ports. And also what I have found when I've been setting up my servers is that the port numbers must be at least two, two digits different than the next server. So for example, my first server, server port 7777, query port 27015. I go to my next server, my second server that I set up, 7779, two digits higher, and 27017, again, two digits higher. And then my third and final server that I set up for the Scorched Earth map, again, two digits higher, two digits higher. And that's important. You need to have that gap. You need to have a gap, a clear gap between the server ports and the query ports. I don't understand why. It's just how Arc works and how the Steam integration with the servers works. So anyway, once you've got that done, you've got your port set up the next thing you need to do is scroll down the, the settings until you get to the option under server options and these two boxes here are what you're going to need to be looking for now where it's got alternate save directory name this is an alternative directory to store world and you know underneath the servers folder to store the world player and tribe files now again it's it's optional you don't have to enter anything in here and i've i've just kept it very simple and named each one after the map that i'm i'm playing on and basically it will create a, another folder within your server folders where it will keep all this all the cluster information um contained 
The important thing is this box here, the CrossArc Data Transfer Cluster ID. Now this is a number or a word or a key combination, you know, that is specific to your three servers. And basically you create that, okay. And again, the cluster directory override button is ticked, which allows you to use a common cross server storage location that functions between multiple servers running on the same machine. But this ID is the important bit. You create any number you like in there, fill the box. The more numbers you have, the more chance of it being original and unique to you. And then you put that same number onto every single one of your servers. Okay. You've got every single one of them linked. So basically what you do then, once that's all set up and done and saved, it's simply then a case of going in, hitting the start button. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna bother updating the mod mods at this point. I will do if I was playing, obviously, going to be playing the server properly. Move to this one. Start up the center map. So basically you're going to end up with basically three windows open. And I'll just put them over here and do the same for Scorched Earth. Start button. And again, it will tell me that the mods are out of date. I don't care at this point because I'm not going into game. I'm not going to be playing. It's purely just a case of getting all three uh, servers started running and making sure, of course, that you're able to see them in game. Go back to my island. And obviously this bit just takes a little bit more time. If you're running one server, it should load that up, set it up, initialize it, publish it very quickly. When you're running two servers, it takes a little bit longer because again, you're using more resources on your, your PC. And obviously three servers, four servers, four, however many servers you're running, it's just gonna make it a little bit longer to start up and get them available and published so in my I think my previous video I kind of cut this bit out and like jump cut did a jump cut from starting the service and then being available I'm not going to do that this time so you can see exactly how long it takes for my servers to start up with my settings if that gives you some kind of indication then when you're trying to launch your own servers how they are doing whether you're, you, you, you know your servers are on the right path and they're going to publish and they're going to be fine and available or whether you're going to see in your mind straight away that something's not right, it's not going to work and you can stop and go and investigate why it's not going to work. So we're just going to wait a, again for a little while. Hopefully everything should publish okay because as I say, Arc Server Manager, I've updated that today. My maps and everything should be updated to the latest game version. It's only the mods that are um, out of out of date, if you like. So it's saying straight away that the the island map should be available. That should change in a second or two. Yeah, available. See? No waiting for publication, nothing like that. That's available. And all the rest will do the same. So I know they're all, all running fine. And one way I can also check that, and this is another way of a great way to check if your servers are, are published without actually going into games. If you go into your Steam, go up to View, go to Servers, Obviously, make sure you're looking for Arc Survival Evolved. 
Okay. These are all should be alphabetical eyes. So my servers are obviously named after my channel. Uh, gaming for fun. So they should be under appear under G, I think. A lot of servers. So you, obviously, depending on what you've named your server, you might have to scroll down quite a long list to find them. I saw them briefly there. They flashed up. Not easy. Oh, there they are. Look. Right, stop. Refresh. Because I know they're there. There, look. They're available. They're published on steam's servers so they've been they've been published they're not awaiting publication they are there they're live if you go into game now you can find them and again if you favorited them you'll be able to see them on your favorite screen and again if you set up right and obviously your local area network you will see them on the LAN tab as well so that's one good way of checking again that you are you know so again just change filter select arc survival evolved and do a search and if you can't see your servers on there then you've got problems and that brings me on to the next point a lot of people were having issues or seem to be having the same issues which all stems to port forwarding and in my first video I didn't cover it in a lot of detail because as I said everybody's computers are different everybody uses different antivirus internet security everyone's got different modems different routers for me to know the settings for every single combination of software and hardware out there would be well it's it's ridiculous I can't do it I'm one person I can only do what I've got access to myself and what I'm working with so for me doing the port forwarding obviously I have an Asus um, Asus router so what I need to do to do the port forwarding is I needed to go into open up my internet browser whatever your browser is Internet Explorer Firefox Chrome etc 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 typed in obviously the IP address for my router to access my router's settings you know web-based settings logged in with my admin name and password which brings me then into the settings where I can change all my internet settings now ignore the fact I've got a flashing exclamation mark up here that just tells me my router has a firmware update available which I will be doing later on but what you need to do is go to the section within your your own router again Every route will have a similar type of web-based setting screen or some, some configuration method. You need to go into your, the one that's specific for your router, and you need to find where in that settings page you have the options for port forwarding. For me, it's under the um, wide area network settings for ASUS, and you've got your internet connection, dual WAN, port triggers, don't think I've got anything under port triggers, nope. But port um, forwarding is the big one. So if I click onto port forwarding, obviously it gives me all the information about what port forwarding is and what it does. And then I've got obviously port forwarding settings within my, my router. Now ignore the first ones on here to do with Twitch TV, MDNS block, they're just, they're complete, they have nothing to do with arc servers and playing arc they're completely different they're for me to do streaming and to um, block a, a vulnerability um, which can lead to sort of thing my ISP sent me that but the more important things to remember are your arc server manager so again service name I've obviously entered arc server manager and basically what I've done for every server I'm running we just flip back to where is it? Arc Server Manager 
and again, your server ports and your query ports. For every server you set up, you will need to go into your router settings and make sure you have server port, query port, entered, and for protocols, you need to make sure that both TCP and UDP are, en are enabled. And also, if your router asks for it, mine does, you have to specify the I local IP address where you want information on the being that the router detects on those ports being sent to. So I've got it obviously set to my current PC's IP address. You'll notice down here, I have got a different IP address. That is for my laptop. So again, on my router, even though my laptop's not connected to this PC and it's not connected to my router at this moment in time, I have got a, a, a server set up on it, which is using different ports. Again, you'll notice the port numbers are completely different. Again, on my current PC, 777, 779, 781. Those are the, for the three servers in my cluster. This is this is more of a test server on my on my laptop, and it's got a different IP address because obviously it's a separate piece of equipment. It has a separate IP address, so it in no way interferes with my other my current servers if you like on my PC my main servers my actual proper gaming gameplay servers so yes you need to do this you need to go into your router or your modem if it's a combined router modem I'm obviously on fiber optic cable so I have a separate modem and router my modem is purely just a modem it has no firewall on it it has no things it's just a straight cable coming from the street outside the house into the box and an Ethernet cable comes out of it which would normally go to your PC I've obviously got it going into a router because I'm obviously trying to distribute my internet access to computer TV PlayStation consoles TiVo box <laughs> laptop <laughs> so yes you need to figure out how to do the port forwarding for your specific router and that will normally, once you've got this set up, will fix most of your problems. When you then start your server, go into Arc Server Manager, start your server, it should publish, it'll be available. You go into, go into Steam, check the servers page, you should see your servers there. And it, when you go into Arc, you should then be able to join it. Other people would be able to join it, as long as you can see it. In Steam, I'll just go back into it. If you can see your server in Steam on the main internet page. So again, for me, scrolling down the list. There they are. They're published. People can join those. Anyone in the world can join those servers if they've got the correct details. If you can't see your servers on there, and the only place you can see them is on your favorites tab or your LAN tab, you've got issues. You've still got something blocking you from getting your server being able to communicate outside of your little local network. Now, this is what happened to me when I first set up my servers. I had this exact same problem, so I understand the people in the comment section on my last video okay I ch obviously I did the checked my settings in my router everything was fine could not work out why I still could not get my servers published and have people be able to see them and join them and it was actually in the end because of my internet security now again everyone uses different internet security I currently use Norton Security. I'm lazy. I've had this on my PC for God knows how many years now. Seven or eight years. I haven't been 
bothered to change it and do any research or homework to find out what the best security software is, who the best manufacturer is these days, whether it's a Vast, Kaspersky, who else is there? Uh, AVG, not, not really ever been a fan of AVG. Uh, McAfee, you know, there's all these different companies, you know, that do internet security. So everyone has a different program installed. Some people probably just use Windows Defender, for all I know. And it probably has the same same settings. But again, I found, for me, Norton Security was what was stopping me. And basically, I had to go into Settings. Do, 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 do. Firewall. Because again, it has a software firewall. And obviously, a hardware firewall in the router. Okay, I then had to go to program control first of all. And make sure uh, make sure first of all Arc Server Manager is either got auto access or is allowed access to the to connect to the internet basically and access the internet. And again, the reason I've got three entries in my program control is because I had um, server manager installed on in different locations, <laughs> three different locations. So it always keeps a copy. I could go through and delete. I could delete that one and that one because they're not used anymore. That's my, if you like, my current Arc server manager. I have it on my desktop basically to, for easy launching. And then. You need to come down your list of programs and software that has access to the internet and make sure when I find it you have got shoot a game and again so there we go a lot if we find that uh, so that one there the shooter game server.exe that's the one we're looking for that's the one we're really interested in that's your actual server. Most people will find they've only got um, shoot. No, is it, is it? Again, I've had it installed on many different locations. They're old shortcuts. Ignore those. These are the two we should be looking at. Basically, there's the first one that just says shoot a game, shoot a game dot exe. Now that is your actual ARC game executable. That's when you click click to run and play ARC, that's the program that launches. Don't confuse that with shooter game server.exe. That's the actual server. So you need to make sure both of those executables, if you like have access to and are allowed to access um, the internet basically so again for me Norton Internet Security the first thing that controls that for me on my computer is program control again whatever internet security you're using it's probably slightly different the next thing you have to do or I had to do traffic rules uh, yes okay traffic rules and again this is a little bit more specific now these rules determine how the firewall handles connections for all the programs on your con computer a rule that appears above other rules in the list overrides those rules now this section is more specific and in-depth and is more acute if you like more in tune with the port forwarding found in the router set up so basically so on this list if I scroll down it a lot of these are automatically or these rules the fact that there's millions of them in this list ignore that most of these are automatically set up by the um, software basically when it programs are installed it automatically adds the rules should be one here for arc if I can find it Okay, can't see it straight away. It's not jumping out because again, it tends to be quite hidden. 
basically what I had to do, I had to come in here, click on the add button and create a new rule. Basically add rule. Do you want to block, allow or monitor a new connection? I wanted to allow. Okay. And then it was what type of connections do you want to allow? Connections to other computers? Connections from other computers? Connections to and from other computers. Logically, as I'm running a server that I want people to be able to join, it has to be the bottom one. I need to be able to communicate out. They need to be able to communicate in. Okay. What computers or sites do you want to allow access to? For simplicity, any computer. Okay. What pro protocol do you want to allow? So again, I did TCP and UDP. And then it was a case of what types of communication or ports do you want to allow? For me, this rule will only apply if it matches all of the ports listed below. So again, port range, because again, I'm running three servers. I created a rule that was basically zero, two, what was it? Seven, nine, zero, say. Even though my servers are using ports 7777, 7779, 7771, uh, sorry, 7781, I specified a 20 port range there. Okay, and then you do the same again for your query ports. So, two, what was it? I can never remember this one. 270. 27010 to 27030. So that's them done and added. Click next. Apply rule for NAT traversal. Again, I didn't need to change that, I just left that as default. What do you want to call this all? And it asks you to give you you ask it asks you to give you a name. So you can give it a name and I called it Arc Server Manager Settings. Okay. Basically, it obviously didn't show up on that previous list. So that's basically how I created the rule. And then you click finish, you'll click apply, and then that's it. It will be on here. And it'd be one of these green ones, I think. But again, I can't see it jumping out at me straight away at this point in time because there's that many of them. And it doesn't sort it in any logical order. So I can't see it. But yeah, that was how I set up my port forwarding and my access rights. I had to do it in the internet security and I had to do it on the router. With that done, as you can see, I have no issues. I have no issues publishing my servers. They're all up and running, all three of them. And if I go into game, okay, quickly before I actually jump into the game and show you that my servers are working and that I'm able to see them and join them, quickly going back to the start of the video, I was talking about the cluster IDs. I forgot to mention this actual settings for multiple servers. Basically, in Arc Server Manager, on your servers, on your three servers, you need to scroll down to the rules section and you will have enabled tribute downloads. You need to make sure that's enabled. Okay. To allow the ability to upload and download players, characters, dinosaurs, items, and be able to move to another server and download your same character, dinosaurs, items, etc. Now the next box on the list is no transfer from filtering. I tick this box as well because basically what this means is if somehow a character tries to come onto your server or a player tries to come onto your server with dinosaurs, items, etc etc that they haven't acquired or earned whilst playing on your servers it won't allow those items so basically it stops people transferring items into your servers that they've acquired from elsewhere from other servers 
So it stops, you know, people bringing in real high-level dinosaurs that they've, you know, you know, been working on on other servers and coming in and briefing you, harassing you, whatever. You basically control the only items that people can transfer up or down to and from servers are the items that they acquire whilst playing your servers. So that is important. Tick the no filtering box. You can then go further and prevent the ability to download survivors or upload survivors, but don't do that because then you will not be able to transfer from the, the server you're on to another server. Item downloads and uploads, that basically prevents you taking items. So again, if you have a character, you go to upload him, that's an obelisk or a supply beacon or whatever. To then transfer him onto another server to download him on another server what will happen is when he spawns on the new island he'll be as naked as he was when he first started the game all the items he had on him in his inventory will not transfer with him again some people in my case i would rather my characters at least when they transfer to the new server to the new map they have the clothes on their back and the items they have in their pockets <laughs> you know it's only fair what they what they're actually able to carry they can take that with them and then of course you've got your dinosaur upload so you can block people from being able to move dinosaurs across the servers again for me on my servers i'm allowing it and then you've got options here to override the survivor upload, item upload, and dinosaur upload exploration. Because again, what happens is, to be able to move, you have to go to a either a supply drop, a beacon, an obelisk, and then you need to basically upload all your data to the to the, the server, the cluster server. If you like the the overhanging, if you've, you you picture a tree, you've got your three servers. You've then got a, like a little cloud bit over the top of all three of them which is where your information gets uploaded to and that's obviously going to sit in memory on your pc that you're running now it's going to take up you know you know physical memory it's going to take up resources on your system so you can basically set how long items stay in that area for before they get deleted because the last thing obviously you want is loads of people coming on your server uploading tons of stuff and just leaving it there because basically what will happen is your servers will slow down, your performance will go down, and your game will suffer. So again, set your upload expiration times to what suits you. Mine are defaulted at the minute to 1,440 minutes. You could set that earlier. You could set that later depending on how many people you have playing on your servers, whether it's a, you know, a closed server that only, you know, You've only got a few friends playing on. It's very private. You might want to set that out longer. It's entirely up to you. But basically, that's how you then set it up. And again, as long as you've got the same settings then enabled on all of your servers, on all three of your tabs, all three of your profiles, and the most important thing, of course, is making sure you've got that ID, the same on all of them, you will be able to transfer across your server. So if I go into game now, I should be able to play, um, find my servers, join them. Now one more thing as well I've just thought of, actually while I'm doing this, as I'm about to launch the game and do this, your local IP. Let me just tab back to that, if it'll let me. It probably won't. Yes it will. Okay. Local IP sets the local private IP the server will listen on. This should be your primary network card which routes to the public internet. Now again, depending on people's PCs, you may find when you click on this box, you have multiple adapters. For my actual desktop PC, I've only got the one network card and it's an Evernet internal card. So I've only got the one, that's my IP. And that's the address if you remember I've got set up in my router's port forwarding. Okay. Very important. Make sure that your local IP here matches what you set up in your port forwarding. 
Also, it's very important when you come to launch your servers, you check this. Because on my laptop, I have a network card, Ethernet. It also has a wireless card. And what happens sometimes is this changes. And it will say, for example, if that's a the wireless card, it might put the wireless card in there. If it does that, you can't connect. Because obviously the wireless card's IP address is different <laughs> to the network card. And your port forwarding won't work. So very important there to remember that. In my case, I don't have a, as I say, a separate card, but I do have a VPN. And I had that, that had been set to that. And I couldn't get into game a few moments ago when I tried this before I remembered I had forgot to record the bit about the tribute downloads and stuff. So yeah, I failed when I tried to record this as one video. So join ARC. That's favorite, so obviously it's gonna find them. I don't wanna do that, I wanna test it on unofficial, don't I? <laughs> Straight away, there they are, look. There's my island. There's my Scorched Earth, and there's my center map. So they're all there, and I can click on them. I think my character is currently sat on the island. So if I click join, open it, joins. Loading the mods. And it should pop me into my world. So oh, give me a second. It should pop me in here. Again, I've got 20 mods. It's a bit of a a lot. <laughs> That's one of you guys straight away now. Actually, my phone's just alerted me that someone else has put a comment on my original video. So, hopefully this video will clear up some of those comments, as I say, and give you more stuff to work on. We'll see, won't we? <laughs> I hope. Hope it works. As I say, I found my games, they're all, my servers are all available, and I've logged in. There we go. That's my message. It takes a bit of a while for the graphics to kick in. Graphics should kick in very quickly, because obviously I've got my GTX 1070 now, so yeah, they're all kicked in. Oh, no, 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 no. Didn't want to do that. Didn't want to do that. I wonder, don't want to be in chat, do I? Silly thing. It's been a while since I've played, you may have noticed. Dinosaurs right here. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a bit of a, um, <laughs> shall we call it? Donald Trump mindset at the minute. I'm trying to build a massive wall around my base to keep the Mexicans out. <laughs> I've gone wall crazy. Um, it's been so long since I've played the game, I've only just realised the UI's changed. And the inventory. Wowzers. Hmm. Okay, that's going to take some getting used to. I've got to get back into playing this because they've done an update and then some. So, yeah, I'm just going to quick run round. I want to see if I can find. Ah, here, it's down. Actually, it's already here. Look, it's down. It is down. Magic. Okay, so this is where I can show you how you then do the transferring. So, obviously, you need to go up to your beacon, access it. Uh, wow, 
Wow, this is new. Oh, got flipping attacked by compies. Stupid things. So I hope you've all found this video to be helpful, like you did the, the first video I did on Arc Server Manager. Again, if you have got any questions or comments about anything covered in this video, please feel free to put them in this comment below in the section comment section below, and I'll try my best to answer them if I can, if I know the answer. Um, again, if it's going to be constant questions about port forwarding and stuff. Again, one of the things I did notice on the first video is nobody tells you what routers, modems they're using, what software they're using. That would be a big help. If you actually post that information in the comment as well, then it might be able to give myself or anyone else that's browsing the comment section a, um, a, a bit of a, a head start on where to look to find the information that you want. You know, if you just say, how do I set up port forwarding on my router? What brand of routers do I start looking at? <laughs> <laughs> to try and find out how to do port forwarding. If you say to me, oh, I've got Netgear model XYZ router, how do I do port forwarding? Generally, that means I can go away, Google and look up that model of router and find out how to do port forwarding on it. As can anyone else. As can you. <laughs> you know, so again, I hope these videos have been useful. They give you a guide for you then to be able to go away and do some do some legwork, do some footwork yourself to get your settings set up how you need them for your own purpose. So again, if this video has been helpful to you, please hit the like button. If you like my videos, if you've liked my art videos or you know you want to have a check out and you like checking out some of my other gaming let's play videos, subscribe to my channel. It would be a great help for me. I would love to have some more subscribers. I would love to have more people regularly viewing my content. And I, um, as I say, hope to do more of these videos. Ideally, what I would like to show you is a video where I show you how to actually upload your characters and move them from server to server. I was going to do that in this video, but when I actually logged into Arc, I've discovered the game has had lots and lots of updates since I last played it on PC. I've actually spent more time recently playing it on PS4 and I've got my Platinum Trophy for it. But obviously they've done lots of changes to ARC on PC in the last month or two. The UI is completely different and it's going to take me a little while to get my head around those changes. Also the area where I have built my base currently on the island doesn't have ready access to supply drops, beacons and stuff and the dinosaurs I've got are all pretty much land based. I don't have any flyers. I was trying to play a game without having flyers. I know they've done a flyer nerf but it's nothing to do with that. It just becomes a little bit too easy to play the game when you hop on a Pteranodon or an RG and you fly to point A and collect all your resources. I wanted to keep things a little bit more challenging by making sure I had to travel across ground or the ocean, the water, and be open to attack from whatever and anything and everything. So once I've had a chance to play with some of that offline, off camera, and I've got my head around it and understand how it all works now, I'll probably come back and do a video to show you exactly how you transfer your character to a different server and that. So, as I say, for now, this is me, C. Wadiyisa, gaming for fun, saying bye for now.